Hello friends, Satyendra here and in this video, let's design mechanism for stop valve assembly in Creo parameter. So let's get started. So once you complete this tutorial, you can easily design the mechanism for this kind of valve. And, uh, and when you run the mechanism, you get this kind of result. So this is the open condition and this is the close condition and to design the mechanism we need a fresh assembly. So I will just close this assembly and I will open the fresh assembly. I will just open my new assembly. So this is the new assembly which we have just created. So if you have not done this assembly then watch my previous video and create this entire assembly. Now before I start the mechanism first thing we need to do is we need to create a section view. So go to view section select assembly front make it section C and say ok. So this section view looks like this. Now one small changes I will do to this section. I will just go to models, exclude selected models and I will exclude few components from this section. So I will select hand wheel, hold the control key and select this nut, spindle, then you select this pin, select the collar and then you select this valve. So these are few parts I am excluding from this section, I will say ok. So now this section looks like this. Now add some color. So I will just go to component, I will select this component, this component, this component, this one and this one. I can even apply some other appearance for different components, not the mechanism. But before I start mechanism, I will request all of you to put at least one comment about my videos. Anything you feel, you can just write as a comment. Let me see how many positive comment I get. Now let's start mechanism. So. Before I start mechanism, I will just check the distance between this face and this face because this is the distance the wall will move up. So this is around 28 mm. Now the mechanism, so when we talk about mechanism, there are three things you need to keep in your mind. The first thing is dynamic constraint, second thing is connection and the third thing is motor. So this assembly is created using static constraint, all the parts are fixed to their location. Now to move the components, you need to change the static constraint to dynamic constraint for some of the parts. And for that first you need to understand the function of this valve. So you need to see how many parts are moving. So as per my understanding, I see that this spindle rotates and moves up and down. And because of this spindle, other part which is linked with this moves up and down. So if this spindle moves up, it takes this valve up. If this spindle moves down, it takes the valve down. Similarly, this hand wheel will also move up and down. That means everything is dependent on the spindle. So if you apply dynamic constraint to this spindle, the spindle will move up and down and parallelly other related parts will also move up and down. So before applying the dynamic constraint to this spindle, first thing you need to do is you need to delete 
the existing constraint to all moving parts. So the first moving part is the valve. So go inside this and delete the static constraint which you have already applied. So I will just delete this and I will say OK. Similarly, I will delete the static constraint to spindle. I will select this, right click, delete and I will say OK. Do this for every individual part which is moving up and down. So, this is the first step we need to do. Now, the last part is this M20 nut. Say OK. Now, you can drag this valve below the spindle. So, from here till here, these are the parts which will move up and down. Now, apply the dynamic constraint to this spindle and then these parts you just assemble with reference of spindle. So, you should not take any other reference, you should take a reference of spindle. So, first thing is I will just add a dynamic constraint to the spindle. So, these are the dynamic constraint and these are the static constraint. So, to apply the dynamic constraint, just click here. Now, here you have variety of constraint. The pin constraint, if your part is having only rotary motion, then go with pin. If the part is having only sliding motion, then go with slide. And if the part is having both the motion together, then go with cylinder. So, if you see the spindle, it rotates and it moves up and down. So, it is having rotary plus sliding motion together. So, in that case, go with cylinder. Now, when you select cylinder, you need to select the center axis for both the linked part or you can go with the cylindrical surface. So, I will select this surface here, go to placement, second surface from second part. So, you need to carefully select the surface or this surface. So, one cylindrical surface from spindle and another surface from this bridge. So, you see bridge surface selected and spindle surface selected. Other constant translation and rotation I do not need. So, I will just say ok. Now, assemble other parts with reference of spindle. So, before that I will just hide these items and I will hide these items. For time being, I will just hide the valve and then I will hide the pin. Now, this is the collar, assemble the collar with reference of spindle. Now, here you can take static constant. So, I will go with this. So, just select this surface and select this surface. First constant is done. Then select this inner surface with this surface. This is done. Say OK. Now, I will just hide spindle and I will unhide pin. I will assemble this pin with reference of collar. So, here I will just switch on the center axis. This axis with this axis. Then I will switch off the axis and switch on the datum plane. I will select uh, this datum plane with reference of this datum plane. Move inside. Make it 17. And this is also done. Say OK. Now, unhide this valve and this spindle. Now, 
Now I'll just hide collar and pin and I will assemble valve with reference of spindle. So I will select this face and I will assemble with this face and then I will select the cylindrical face with this face. Go to placement and remove this allow assumption. Say OK. Now just unhide this valve seat and then modify this valve. Now the third constraint I will apply with reference of valve seat. So I will just select this datum plane which is valve datum plane and then I will select a datum plane from the valve seat. You see. And I will say OK. So this is done. Now the next part is this hand wheel. So just edit this. Go for static constraint. So first constraint is from this face to this face. Then the second constraint is from this face to this face and the third constraint is from this face to this face. Say OK. Similarly, for this nut, first constraint is this bottom face, this face to the bottom face and then the second constraint is from this cylindrical face to this face. Say OK. So everything is done. Now just go to drag component and click here. You got snapshot 1. Now just try to drag it like this. So it is happening. Just double click here to bring it to the original position. Close it. Now unhide all the parts. First thing is done. Now if I go to drag component and try to drag this, I can see that it is moving. Double click this to bring to the original position. Now to apply the mechanism, go to applications mechanism. So first thing we have already done, now the second thing is the connection. So the connection is between this bridge part and the spindle. So it rotates here and because of the thread it moves up and down. So this is the actual connection. So there are two components having thread connection. So that comes under the gear connection. So select the gear. Now when you select the gear, you have gear 1 and gear 2. So you need to select the reference from part 1 and part 2. So for me spindle is the part 1. So it is asking for motion axis. So just go close to this. There are two symbols here. One is arrow and another one is arrow with rotation. So select arrow with rotation. Now 
now in gear 1 you have piece circle dia so you need to find out the piece circle dia for uh, the spindle so this diameter is 28 and the outer diameter is 34 so piece circle dia is uh, the distance between the center of this thread to the center of this thread so 28 and this is 34 so this gap is 6 so 28 plus 6 by 2 which is 31 is the piece circle dia so this will be 31 then you go to gear 2 now the gear 2 is for bridge now just apply gear 2 select the arrow symbol so once you have selected go to properties now here you have rack ratio you have two options here pitch circle diameter or user defined go with user defined now you need to add a value here so this is mm per revolution so this value should be the distance which this gear cover per revolution so the distance will be the pitch because for per rotation it moves one pitch so the pitch will be develop the thread so thread distance is 3 so pitch will be 6 so just put 6 here and everything is done just say okay so now if you go to drag component and drag your part it will move 6 mm per rotation so the connection is also done now the last thing is applying the motor to run the mechanism so now if i rotate this you see it is moving up and down so this rotation is manual now we need to apply the motor to automate this and for that you need to apply the servo motor now when you apply the servo motor again you select this rotation symbol there are two symbols there carefully select that go to profile details and here you have different ways to run the motor so i will go with angular velocity degree per second for each second how much degree i want to rotate it i can control that so here i will just take a constant speed and i will take this 90 degree so per second it will rotate 90 degree and i'll say okay so now if you go down you have added a motor one now we have added the motor now let's run the mechanism and for that you go to mechanism analysis and here start time is 0 in time i will keep it 10 motor motor 1 start end and i will just run it now still if you want to run then go to snapshot bring it to original position and increase the in time so let's make it 20 run now it is hitting inside so just reduce the in time make it uh, 18 click here first and then run so this looks correct okay once again run so this is running now to bring it down create one more motor in reverse direction so go to servo motor again select the same symbol and then go to profile details select angular velocity and this time you just put minus 90 degree and say ok go inside the analysis edit this and here 
you just add the second motor motor 2 this motor should start after 18 so here you just write 19 and here you write 36 the total time will be 18 plus 18 36 this you make start till 18 or from 0 also you can write 0 to 18 and 19 to 36 come to preference this you make it 36 because now the total time will be 36 now just run it so it is moving up and it is moving down so this is the actual motion moving up and moving down but now if you see the motion it looks very straight there is no smoothness okay so to make it smooth i will just modify the motor this is the first motor now see the speed is constant so the motor runs in the constant speed and that is why this line is straight now what i am doing here is i am changing this constant speed to variable speed okay and then it will run like a spline i'll change to this i'll just add four rows here so now see my total distance is 28 so this distance i will take as 25 the maximum movement so 0 then uh, this i will take as 10 this i will take as 15 and this i will take as 25 so see these are the timings at the zero time the rotation is zero now from zero to ten second the speed degree per second increases from zero to 90 degree and from 10 to 15 second it runs with a constant speed 90 degree and then i will gradually reduce the speed so from 15 to 25 it reduces from 90 degree to zero degree so this rotation will slowly start and then it reaches to 90 degree per second and then it runs on a constant speed and then gradually decrease okay so gradually increasing till here if you make it linear you will understand better so the spindle speed will gradually increase from 0 to 90 degree per second and then for this time duration it will run on a constant speed and then the speed gradually decreases earlier the speed was a constant speed now gradual increase constant and decrease and to make it smooth you can just select spline so the complete motion will become a smooth motion say okay now you just modify this now here this value will change now let's make it 60 and go to here now this motor one start that is 0 to now the current timing is 25 you have just applied the value so this will start with 26 till the end or you can write 60 because you have taken the highest time frame here 60 okay now just run it first you bring to the original position and then run it see slowly starting reaching to the highest level okay so now you can see here that uh, motor one is running smoothly but motor two is a constant speed so just change the second motor also so here also i will just use table i will add four rows with the same value 0 10 then uh, 15 and then 25 here you just need to put the reverse value minus 90 degree and then here also minus 90 degree say okay now see the magic just go to this 
and this time 25 plus 25 50 so this should be more than that i will just put 55 here and then motor 2 here you put 25 which is 0 to 25 and then from 26 till end this is also okay or you can put 55 here no problem now just run it you see Okay, now go to front view and see this gap, just run it, yes 25, very nice. Now here you can increase this gap, if you make 30, then you need to make it 60 because you have added extra value here. So motor 1 will run till 25 and then it will hold for some time and then it will start coming down. So here also you need to make it 60. Now just run it once again. So it is moving up, it will hold for some time now and then it will come down. Now I will just make it 5 to get the faster result. You see? Now if you want to hold little more, let us make it 35. So from 25 to 35, 10 seconds it will hold. So because of that, this will increase to 65. So how this is getting calculated, the motor timing which you have assigned here is from 0 to 25 and for this also 0 to 25. So 25 plus 25 is 50 and then you are holding 10 second extra. So 50 plus 10 is 60. So you can take 60 here or more than 60. So I have taken 65 for safer side and the same value you need to take here and then you can run it. This time it will hold for longer time and it will come down. So you have successfully designed the mechanism. Now to play the mechanism, you can go inside this and then you can increase the speed, you can uncheck these two options and just play it. It is going up holding for some time and then coming down. Now this mechanism you can convert it into a video. So you can apply the resolution, the frame, everything and you can just say ok and you can save it. Regenerate and save it and your mechanism is done. So this was the mechanism design for stop valve assembly in Creo Parametric and I hope this video will be helpful. Now write down your views about this video in the comment section below. Like the video and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.